fellow Democrats. The five will be joining us shortly. I'm Brett Baer in New York. You're looking live on Capitol Hill as this has moved forward today, a shifting uh, situation with moderate Democrats moving towards this impeachment inquiry all over President Trump's phone call with the Ukrainian leader, a phone call in which it's alleged that he said that Joe Biden, the former vice president, should be investigated and that he wanted the Ukrainians to do it. Uh, the alleged phone call uh, interaction uh, was that he was holding back money for the Ukrainians, military funding for the Ukrainians, uh, calling for this investigation. However, we don't know what exactly is in that phone call. We don't know exactly what the whistleblower in the intelligence community has said in the complaint. And now Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House. Last Tuesday, we observed the anniversary of the adoption of the Constitution on September 17th. Sadly, on that day, the intelligence community ex inspector general formally notified the Congress that the administration was forbidding him from turning over a whistleblower complaint on Constitution Day. This is a violation of law. Shortly thereafter, press reports began to break of a phone call by the President of the United States calling upon a foreign power to intervene in his election. This is a breach of his constitutional responsibilities. The facts are these. The Intelligence Community Inspector General, who was appointed by President Trump, determined that the complaint is both of urgent concern and credible. And its disclosure, he went on to say, relates to one of the most significant and important of the Director of National Intelligence's responsibility to the American people. On Thursday, the Inspector General testified before the House Intelligence Committee, stating that the acting Director of National Intelligence blocked him from disclosing the whistleblower complaint. This is a violation of law. The law is unequivocal. The DNI staff, uh, it, it says the DNI, DNI, Director of National Intelligence, shall provide Congress the full whistleblower complaint. For more than 25 years, I've served on the Intelligence Committee as a member, as the ranking member, as part of the Gang of Four, even before I was in the leadership. I was there uh, when we created the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. That did not exist before 2004. I was there even earlier in the 90s when we wrote the whistleblower laws and continued to write them to improve them to ensure the security of our intelligence and the safety of our whistleblowers. I know what their purpose was, and we proceeded with balance and caution as we wrote the laws. I can say with authority the Trump administration's actions undermine both our national security and our intelligence and our protections of the whistleblowers, more than both. This Thursday, the acting DNI will appear before the House Intelligence Committee. At that time, he must turn over the whistleblower's full complaint to the committee. He will have to choose whether to break the law or honor his responsibility to the Constitution. On the final day, of the Constitutional Convention in 1787, when our Constitution was adopted, Americans gathered on the steps of Independence Hall to wait the news of the government our founders had crafted. They asked Benjamin Franklin, what do we have, a republic or a monarchy? Franklin replied, a republic if you can keep it. Our responsibility is to keep it. Our republic endures because of the wisdom of our Constitution, enshrined in three co-equal branches of government, serving as checks and balances on each other. The actions taken to date by the President have seriously violated the Constitution, especially when the President says, Article 2 says I can do whatever I want. For the past several months, we have been investigating in our committees and litigating in the courts so the House can gather all the relevant facts and consider whether to exercise its full Article I powers, including a constitutional power of the utmost gravity, approval of articles of impeachment. And this week, the President has admitted 
to asking the President of Ukraine to take actions which would benefit him politically. The, action of the, Trump, the actions of the Trump presidency revealed the dishonorable fact of the President's betrayal of his oath of office, betrayal of our national security, and betrayal of the integrity of our elections. Therefore, today, I'm announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. I'm directing our six committees to proceed with their investigations under that umbrella of impeachment inquiry. The President must be held accountable. No one is above the law. Getting back to our founders, in the darkest days of the American Revolution, Thomas Paine wrote, the times have found us. The times found them to fight for and establish our democracy. The times have found us today not to place ourselves in the same category of greatness as our founders, but to place us in the urgency of protecting and defending our Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. In the words of Ben Franklin, to keep our republic. I thank our chairman, Chairman, chairman Nadler, Chairman Schiff, of, Chairman Nadler of Judiciary, Chairman Schiff of Intelligence, Chairman Engel of Foreign Affairs, Chairman Cummings uh, of, of uh, Oversight, and Chairman Cummings I've been in touch with constantly. He's a master of, of so much, but including uh, inspectors general and, and uh, whistleblowers. Uh, Congresswoman Richie Neal of the, of the uh, Ways and Means Committee, Congresswoman Maxine Waters of the Foreign Financial Services Committee. And I commend all of our, our members, our colleagues, for their thoughtful, thoughtful approach to all of this, for their careful statements. God bless them, and God bless America. Thank you all. Madam Speaker, never before has the President been convicted by the Senate. What does this accomplish if the Senate doesn't convict? House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Capitol Hill announcing the formal impeachment inquiry moving forward uh, after questions about a phone call with the Ukrainian leader by President Trump. Noticeably, uh, the speaker said it was a violation of law with respect to holding back the whistleblower's complaint to Capitol Hill, but she said a breach of constitutional responsibility as far as the president's actions on that phone call. We mentioned earlier President Trump today tweeting that he has authorized the release of the transcript unredacted of that phone call with the Ukrainian leader. And uh, he is saying that this is all another witch hunt, according to the president's words. Speaker Pelosi saying that she has activated and asked all of her committee chairs to come forward in this process that now will be a formal impeachment inquiry. Join me here, Martha McCallum, John Roberts on the phone, Britt Hume, and Chris Wallace, who just wrapped up a, an interview with the Iranian president. More on that in a minute. Martha, your reaction to what the uh, speaker said? Well, she zeroed in on calling a foreign power to intervene in a U.S. election. So that is the area where she feels that the president has overstepped his bounds. Obviously, it harkens back to the entire Mueller investigation and the concerns about that as well. She's saying it happened here and it happened in a much more clear uh, way that has a, a flow through. And as you said, um, the violation of law from the DNA blocking the whistleblower, which we mentioned before, um, is, you know, is not a, a done deal. There's, there are different interpretations of that, given the the, um, the responsibilities of the of the IG and where they lie, there's also the question that has been uh, very obvious, which has to do with whether or not every conversation that the president has with a foreign leader has the right to remain confidential. But she laid out, you know, her committee leaders well, the way that, to some extent, the way this process is going to go. We're going to learn more about that as it moves forward. But she has started this ball rolling uh, in no uncertain terms. Chris Wallace, uh, again, who just wrapped up an interview with the Iranian president. Uh, Chris, uh, we are told that the whistleblower wants to testify in front of the House and Senate Intelligence Committee, but your thoughts of what uh, the House Speaker just said and the formal initiation of this inquiry? Well, I, I think the, the, the most interesting aspect of this is, you know, we're talking a lot about what the whistleblower knew or didn't know, firsthand knowledge. But the fact is that President Trump and his staff ha have really said quite a lot since Sunday uh, in, in trying to explain or defend what they did. 
uh, that, that puts a lot of meat in the bones. Uh, the fact is, the president says that in that introductory congratulatory phone call uh, with uh, the president-elect at that time of Ukraine, he did talk about Joe Biden, did talk about Joe Biden and his son and possible corruption, uh, and expressed some concerns about wanting the Ukrainian president to look into that. We also know, uh, because it was admitted today by Kellyanne Conway, uh, at the story that was on the front page of the Washington Post uh, this morning, which is that uh, the president did ask acting chief of staff Mick Mulvaney before he made that call uh, in July uh, to stop the uh, provision of military aid to Ukraine, which had been overwhelmingly passed by Congress, everyone seemed uh, in, in the government to want, and the president uh, said he wanted it to be stopped. Uh, and, and, and so the, the two parts of the basic story here, that the president wanted uh, Biden investigated and that uh, he had previously stopped uh, aid that had been approved uh, by Congress for Ukraine, that those have been confirmed by the administration. Now, the president denies it was a direct quid pro quo. I'm saying, unless you investigate, you won't get that money. The president said today, uh, he gave a different answer than he'd given originally. Originally, he'd said it was because I was concerned about corruption. Today, he said it was because some other European countries weren't doing their part. But uh, this is not, uh, you know, it may not bear fruit, but there is, as I say, some meat on the bones here, both in terms of what the president said to the Ukrainian president and the actions that he had taken to stop aid before he made that call. So there's going to be something here for Congress to investigate, whether it ends up rising uh, to the levels of, of articles of impeachment, we don't know. And Andy McCarthy, I thought, as usual, made a very good point, saying that just Starting a process does not mean that you're necessarily going to end up with impeachment. It's a big story. It'll be the headline of every paper in America tomorrow. Congress, the House, begins a formal impeachment inquiry, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go all the way. Exactly. Uh, Chris, stand by, if you would. The president just tweeting moments ago, such an important day at the United Nations, so much work, so much success, and the Democrats purposely had to ruin and demean it with more breaking news, witch hunt garbage so bad for our country. Uh, John Roberts, uh, it's worth noting here that Nancy Pelosi did not schedule a vote with the whole House to authorize an impeachment inquiry. Yeah. She talked about her committee leaders. Uh, if she had complete confidence, wouldn't that be the procedure that she'd use to move forward formally. Well, I think she, she's she's got off the the one meter board. She hasn't got off the three meter board yeah. yet, if you if you will, in terms of taking a high dive. Because again, there's all this that we do not know, and we just got I got a a, a, a more exact transcript of what the president said with the Iraqi president a short time ago. And we're still awaiting the video from that. Uh, but the president said of Nancy Pelosi, she hasn't even seen the phone call. The phone call was perfect, skipping down. But the good news is the voters get it. This is why they say it's good for the election, for him. But you know what? It's bad for the country. What she's doing is very bad if it's true because he didn't know at that point that she was going to go ahead with this. I can't even believe that it's true. How do you do this? And you haven't even seen the phone call. And the whistleblower, they say, the president goes on to say, was secondhand or thirdhand knowledge. So she's, she's tasked her committee chairs with looking into the impeachment process when we've got two very big holes in this story. What exactly did the president say to President Zelensky of Ukraine? We know some of the reporting about it, but the reporting doesn't have the entire context, and we don't know the complaint. A lot of this will come out in coming days, and we'll have you covered. I'm Brett Baer in New York. Please stay tuned to Fox News Channel for continuing coverage of this story with the five, then special report. Come back to Fox for all your news.